During the holidays, we tend to cook nice proteins, whether it's beef, lamb, um, chicken, or fish, and we usually roast them, grill them, or pan fry them, whatever gets the job done. What for me really makes a difference is the sauce that you serve your proteins with. You can have very dry proteins and badly cooked proteins or very cheap proteins, but if you have a good sauce, it could actually save the dish. So today I'm gonna show you how to make four of my favorite sauces to serve with beef. I personally go towards four different types of sauces when I eat steak. The first one being that entrecote sauce, you know, that very famous restaurant in Paris. Absolutely delicious, so I'm gonna show you how to do that, as well as a nice Italian-style salsa verde. So think of a Italian-style salsa verde as being like a chimichurri, just better. Just don't tell Nico that I told you that. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how to make a really good mushroom gravy, and then finally we're gonna finish off with a really nice peppery cream sauce that you're gonna love. Let's start with a delicious mushroom sauce. All you'll need is some olive oil, brown shiitake or portobello mushrooms. You can also use some dried and then rehydrated mushrooms. I actually like to use mushroom powder. A half stick of butter, salt and pepper, three garlic cloves, three fourth cup of red wine, one fourth cup of broth mixed in with some cornstarch, about four tablespoons, one and one half cup of extra beef broth and two tablespoons of chopped tarragon. I actually like to tear the mushrooms for this sauce. It makes things more rustic. If you're wondering whether or not you should clean or peel your mushrooms, most farmed ones are actually pre-cleaned, so you should be good. But for good measure, you can always brush them. But never, ever, ever wet them because mushrooms really absorb liquid quite quickly. Next, chop your garlic, tarragon, and make your little thickener slurry by mixing some cornstarch with your broth, and I'm adding a little bit of mushroom powder here. Again, like I said, you can use dried mushrooms and then just rehydrate them and then use them with the other mushrooms that we're gonna add to the pan later. Now let's get to that. Medium heat, olive oil, and then cook your mushrooms for about five minutes until they're nice and soft and have some color. It's really important to do these in batches and to not overcrowd the pan so that you have some nice texture on all the mushrooms and they all have that same flavor that you're looking for. At this point, you can put the batches back together, make a well in the center, put in some butter, some garlic, and some salt, let the garlic get slightly softer, and then just mix everything together. Clear it all out after two minutes, but make sure not to clean the pan. I think it's important here to use beef fat, so take whatever off cuts you have and render the ends for about 10 minutes until each piece of fat has really rendered out into the pan. At this point, we're gonna deglaze it with some red wine. So the wine really here carries all the flavor of everything that was cooked in this pan. Add the rest of your beef broth, simmer this for about five to 10 minutes until slightly reduced. And then we're gonna add the slurry, the rest of the butter, and we're gonna season it with some salt and some pepper. You can also add some soy sauce here if you want. Turn the heat down to low and you know it's ready when it glistens off a spoon. Right before serving, finish off with tarragon. Let that infuse off the fire for about five minutes while we cook our blade steak. I'm working with a beautiful oyster blade from Five Founders today. Five Founders is a local farm here in Australia that I found uh, from my local butcher shop. When I tried their beef, it was just so good. Buttery, intense, flavorful, everything you want a steak to be. I felt so in love with it that I knew that I had to figure out how to bring it to the Philippines somehow. So now Bozico Beef and Chingolo both carry this beautiful beef and we have a whole range of it available. We import 
grass-fed Angus beef from Argentina. We also have grass-fed Wagyu beef, which is absolutely delicious, from New Zealand. And then most recently, we added some carbon neutral beef from right here in Australia. So I'll put their number uh, where you can see it here on the screen, but also in the description box below. And you can also go to chingoladeli.ph. We have a bunch of hampers and gifts and empanadas and trays things for potlucks or gifts or just anything you might need for kind of like that last minute purchase to either feed the people that you love or just give a great gift to someone uh, during the holidays. All right, let's give this a taste. Mmm. Really the meat in itself, super tender. So oyster steak, obviously oyster blade. You need to cut through that middle um, ligament or tendon or whatever that is. But the sauce like clings to the steak and it's so velvety and rich. It feels so luxurious in your mouth. And those torn bits of mushrooms just makes it really feel nice and rustic. Something that's perfect for any family gathering. Like, this will look so amazing on any table. For our entrecote sauce, you'll need 250 grams of butter, one medium shallot, and half a white onion, two tablespoons of tarragon, one bunch of flat leaf Italian parsley, one bunch of basil, three anchovies, salt and pepper to taste, one lemon, a little bit of soy sauce, capers, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and one egg yolk. I know this is a lot, but really, trust me, it's worth it. This sauce was made famous by the restaurant Entrecote in Paris, and it's like a more intense Café de Paris butter and in a more liquid form, obviously. Start with a medium hot pan, melt your butter completely, but do not let it burn. Add your sliced onions and garlic and cook this down for about two minutes. Now we're not looking to build color here, we just want them to get nice and soft. At this point, you can add your parsley, basil, and tarragon, and the rest of your butter. For the basil and the parsley, I don't really mind the stems that can just go in. Tarragon, I just use the leaves. Add the rest of your butter, capers, and anchovies. You can add as much or as little anchovies and capers as you want, so make sure to just taste as you go. These two ingredients will bring the main seasoning to the whole sauce. Cook this and let it infuse for about five minutes, and then we're gonna squeeze in the juice of half a lemon. In a separate bowl, we're gonna to whisk together an egg yolk, mustard, and olive oil, just really beating that slowly until it's nice and emulsified. Add that and everything else that's in the pan into a blender and blend this for about two to three minutes. Now, let me show you something that I think is really important. When you have this sauce at Entrecote, what's really important to note is that it actually has some kind of separation happening, and that's the fat of the butter that's just basically coming off the sauce. And I think by replicating that, that's what makes this closer to the original. Let's try it out. That, you can taste the literal stick of butter that I put in there. So good. And it has all those notes, the funk, the tanginess, the saltiness, the creaminess, the butteriness, the creaminess. All of that just complementing perfectly this piece of steak. You've heard of chimichurri, now let's make an Italian style salsa verde. You'll need a bunch of mint, chives and parsley, some good quality extra virgin olive oil, one piece of garlic, one tablespoon of capers with a little bit of their juice, two anchovies, one lemon and salt and pepper. Mash together the garlic, capers and anchovies until you form some kind of a paste. 
Chop a small bunch each of parsley and chives, tear some mint leaves, mix this with your paste, and then add in some extra virgin olive oil and the juice of one lemon. Season the whole thing with salt and pepper if you want, but you can also just choose to season your meat and not the sauce. That's pretty much it. This is the Italian salsa verde I was talking about. So the anchovies in here and the capers are just gonna give it so much funk. And then just have, make sure to use some really good extra virgin olive oil so that flavor really comes through as well. It's so bright and that pairs perfectly with that intense fattiness of the beef. Mmm. I almost like having those tears of mint in there brings a really nice kind of like different texture to the whole thing. Last but not least, my favorite black pepper sauce. Start by breaking a bunch of black peppercorns in a mortal and pestle. Um, so you really want to try to do this fresh um, as possible because that's really where you get most of the aroma. Um, you can also do this with a pepper mill if you want, but I actually like to have that texture in there. Try to get these as fine as possible. After cooking some steak in a pan, deglaze it with some sweet port wine. Let that reduce on medium for about two minutes. Throw in some black pepper and some beef stock. Reduce this for about five to 10 minutes until slightly thicker. Now you can whisk in a tiny bit of butter and some cream. You can never go wrong with both really. Let that bubble away for a few more minutes and everything should be really thick, luscious, glistening, and delicious. This is the final sauce, black peppercorns, nice and crushed, freshly crushed, highly recommend it. Don't use uh, one of those pepper mills. That mixed with the port and the butter and the cream just gives it a nice, almost like caramel flavor that obviously will go really well with the beef, but also plays a role in taming the heat that you might get from the peppercorn. Um, Pepper sauces always have to really be between that fine line, and I think the sweetness of the port really helps just keep that in balance. Let's try it. Mm. Lush, creamy, peppery, sweet, so good. Now, if I were to choose favorites, um, I think in terms of the creamy ones, I definitely like the Antoco sauce the best. Um, and then if I want something nice and bright, I will definitely go for the Italian salsa verde. Um, try out these sauces. These would be amazing on fish as well, um, or on lamb. They'd be just as good. Uh, try them out, let me know if you like them, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.